good morning. We are talking this week. This is Fresh Baked Man Alive. And for those of you that may be just joining us for the very first time, we come out every morning at 7 a.m. ish. And our goal is to build your life and your faith, to give you an opportunity to jumpstart your day so that you can show up in whatever place God has called you to be, being the best version of you that you can be. My name is Melva Henderson. This is my husband. He joins us air now and now now and then. And so I thank God for him. So he's going to be sharing some things because he always brings a different perspective. We don't always agree, just FYI. You know, we're not that perfect couple that agree on everything. We do not. And I think that that's what makes it great. That's what makes our marriage great. We've been together uh, a long time, 30-something years. Next week, we will be celebrating 20-something years of marriage and excited about that. And so thank God for his goodness. But we have been talking about... Turn around. I'm trying to figure out when you figure out the number. I know. I love you. You know that. Okay, so here we go. We've been talking about relationships and the importance of relationships. And we're not just talking about relationships from the marriage context. We're talking about any kind of relationship that you find yourself in, but particularly those of you that may be in dating relationships or whatever, because it's important. Life is built on relationships. You know, Skip said something one time that was very powerful. Proof that you were born to be connected to somebody is the fact that you were born with an umbilical cord. That's proof that God created you to be connected to people. And so your whole life, you're going to be connected to somebody. You think about some of the wounds that people have had in their life. Every person in most cases can point to somebody that wounded them. It was a person. And the powerful thing is, is that people hurt you, but God has created it so that people will also provide healing for you. And so that's what we want to do today. We want to give you some, some practical tools to help you be the best version of you in your relationships that you can be. And so with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Skip, where he's going to be talking. What are you going to be talking about today? Oh, my goodness. Um, Just I want to talk about respect and how important respect is in a relationship. Um, You know, dealing with just from a marriage standpoint, if we just want to talk about that for a hot second. When you have two people who love each other and want to be together forever, but the relationship is violated or there's a violation um, for forever becomes long for the one uh, you're with when there's an issue there. You know, I plan on being with you forever. It's a short time when things are good, but it's a long time when things are bad. And when violation happens in a relationship, whether it be marriage, dating, business, the first thing that's lost is trust. Um, Even in dealing with kids, when there's a violation in a relationship with your children, trust is lost. And that's why, you know, as parents, a lot sometimes there's punishment. But um, trust is the foundation of any relationship. And when the trust is gone, there is nothing holding the relationship together. Uh, I've heard this quote that said, trust is built one block at a time, but when it is violated, the entire wall comes crushing down. And you need to figure out, you know, geez, trust is an issue here. And when you understand that trust is an issue in a relationship, then you have to begin to look at what do I do here? Is this relationship, where is it going in this thing? What do I do with it? And what are the things that are in the relationship that's undermining or destroying the trust? Those are key questions that you have to ask. Because, you know, we talk about faith. You know, we've said it multiple times. A faith that hasn't been tested is a faith that can't be trusted. And so although there are challenges that happen in these relationships, Ultimately, if you're mature enough to be able to get through the problems that happen in the relationship, in the end, what it's going to do is it's going to make the relationship stronger. That's what it should be doing. It should be making the relationship stronger and it's building trust. And so, you know, respecting one another and trusting one another is critical in the relationship. But let's talk about keeping secrets. I want to talk about that for a second. Because in our marriage, one of the things that happened is when we came, when we got together, let's talk about before marriage, because I don't want to just limit this to marriage. But when we first got together, 
He had secrets, I had secrets. And what we didn't do is we didn't come to the table and bear our secrets. Number one problem in most relationships that people have these issues and these situations that they're living with or living through. And what they don't do is they don't disclose them. And so then there's this discovery that you end up having once you get into the relationship. It's like, whoa, hold up. I didn't sign up for that. Where did that come from? What is that? Where did that, you know, and it's because you get caught off guard by the secrets. And one thing about secrets, especially if they're things that are undermining or deconstructing uh, your relationships and even your, who you are as a person is that you can push them down, kind of like those games we play, you know, you can push it down, but it's just a matter of time before it pops up because anything hidden is going to come up in your life. And so it's really important that out the gate, if you got issues, that you put them out on the table at the very beginning in the relationship. But I think the biggest uh, reason why people don't put out the issues is because I don't know if I can trust you with my issues. There's a fear of losing too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know what you'll think of me if you know that part of me, and so we have to grow to a place where I trust you enough to really be completely vulnerable with you, and I maybe love you enough to marry you, or to come, or, into, or, a or to come into a relationship you. with you, but do I trust you enough to let you know to take my mask off? And that, that's a different level of trust that you have to grow to because, you know, trust is earned. It's it's just not given to you. Well, well, we date now. I, I need to know all your passwords. I don't I don't know you like that. But you do start out with a, a a measure like the initial. You know how God says that God has given to every man the measure of faith. You do start out with the measure of trust in a relationship, or you would have never gotten into the relationship. You wouldn't have. You would have never even been interested in in taking that step. So you do have that first initial yeah. little seed of trust. But one violation of it, if, especially if you've had issues in the past, yeah. one violation of it can just knock the whole thing off. So I'm sorry, I just want to say that. Yeah. But even that, think about it. Jesus had the disciples, but then he had those who were close to him. Peter, inner his inner circle. And the inner circle knew stuff the rest of the, the disciples, rest of the disciples did not, didn't. Right. And so you're coming into the relationship as, quote unquote, a disciple. But you may not have earned the right or gained the respect or gained the trust to be a part of the inner circle yet. And so you're asking for inner circle privileges without inner circle trust. Yeah, relationship. That takes time. When you think about it, if you meet somebody, if you're wise, if you're wise, the day you meet somebody, you don't take them to your house and take them straight to your bedroom. That No, you come in the house. And you, you sit in the living room. You sit where the couch is. You sit at the dining room table. If you're wise, you don't initially take somebody. What's my point in that? My point in saying that is, is that everybody doesn't get to go into the bedroom. Everybody doesn't get to see the intimate parts of you initially. That is a process of learning and growing and getting to know one another. That's what I'm saying. Definitely. And so with that being said, there has to be, again, trust is earned, not um, just given. Right, right. And so we're talking about respect. You know, right. when you think about respect, you know, things that, um, you, first of all, you got to do, first thing that you've got to do is you've got to be able to pinpoint what is in this relationship that has the potential to undermine it. Right. What What's going on? And so coming to the table right away, knowing if I don't share this, and they find out about this later, this has the opportunity to destroy the relationship. So you have to give me a fair break. You don't get to just come into a relationship. You shouldn't. You don't get to just come into a relationship. You got your issues. You don't tell me about your issues, and then I have to deal with your issues. That's not fair. So what you, I get to choose whether or not I want to deal with your issues. And that's why it's important for people to be open up front. I, you know, I teach my kids this all the time. If you got issues, make them known out the gate and then give that other person the opportunity to make the decision on whether or not they still want to walk with you. Yeah, I agree. You know, um, you know, respect 
when you start disrespecting one another, again, we talk about respect, but no remorse or filter, you're headed towards the end of that relationship. You know, over in Proverbs 19 and 11, I love how it says in the New Living Translation, it says, sensible people control their temper. They earn respect by overlooking wrong. If I want to stay in a place of respecting you and respecting our relationship, there's some things I just got to ignore. I got to overlook. I can't hold you to the fire for every mistake you make because that undermines the trust, that undermines the respect, that undermines the ability to grow with you because I'm looking at your flaws more than I'm looking at your your the good things about you. I'm looking at all the things that makes me go, eh, no, I'm good. Versus, you know what? If they're a great person, they're a loving person, they're, a, you know, whatever. But you have to allow yourself the ability and give yourself permission not to scrutinize everything that everybody does through this microscope and saying, no, I see that speck in your life. And because of that, I don't like specks. So, you know, you're, you're no good to, our, to this relationship. You're no good to me. Now, one of the things I always say is, yeah, there's different things that can, that can undermine it. You know, cheating tears respect up. We talked about hiding tears respect up. You know, one of the things that, you know, it was on a small scale, but yet it undermined um, going shopping, buying stuff, hiding it in the house, in the either in the car or in the back of the closet, and then a month or two, bring it out and say, oh, this old thing, I done had it. Wait a minute. That is new. You haven't worn that yet. You know, that that's so that's how we're doing one another. We're sneaking things. We're, we're hiding stuff from one another. Is that what we're doing now? You know, that, that kind of withholding information, dishonoring people, each other. That, that, that tears, manipulation tears up a relationship. You know, and when this gets to the place where you start doing these things and you don't correct yourself, you've just gotten to a place of the danger zone in whatever relation, in business, in and, and dating and friendship, work relationships, all of that, it's, it's, it's a very dangerous place to be in. But the question becomes, let's say you've done those things. How do you get the respect back? How, 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 do, I, how do I earn your respect back? Again, respect is earned, it's not given. And we've said this on several occasions. If you mess up, Make up, but don't give up. You know, when I violated uh, our marriage relationship, and, and again, I can talk from that place because I, I'm talking from where I've lived. When I, when I violated our relationship in different things, um, I didn't go to Melvin and say, hey, you know, that's old things are passed away. Get over it. It's not what I did to her. I loved her enough to say, I made the mistake, I messed this up, and this is the things I'm going to do to fix it. And no matter how long it takes to fix it, I'm going to stay in a perpetual fixing until it's fixed. And not go, you know what, you got one week to get over this. And then, you know, you, you, you grown now, you should stop all that foolishness. No, I messed up. So it's my job to fix it. And let me ask this question. And this has always been a question. I think I know the answer, but you know, I'd love to hear your perspective. Can you love someone you don't trust? Yeah, you can love somebody you don't trust. Yes, you can love them because love is not, you know, love is, is a commitment. And you can love somebody that you don't trust. I mean, we've all done it in times gone by. Yes, absolutely. But I believe that needs to be said because, you know, people immediately say, I, I don't love you no more. I can't trust you. You, you, you. you probably still love them. It's just 
that respect. I don't right. I don't love what you've done. I don't right. love the way that you're acting. You know, some people say I love you, but I don't like you. You know, that right. kind of a thing. But you can't absolutely love someone that you don't trust. But over a period of time, if that tr that distrust is not addressed, right, then it is going to minimize the level of commitment that you have in that relationship. And so it will appear as though you don't love that person, you know, because you're moving away from your commitment to that person. This is when people begin to emotionally detach from people and they start entering into other relationships, inappropriate relationships with other people. It's not that they don't love the person that they may be, you know, that uh, that that violated the relationship is just that over a period of time, because it's not addressed, then, you know, now they've gone in another direction. Yeah. And so, again, my effort was in repairing the breach, fixing the wall that was broken. And, you know, on the other side. There has to be a. A, a helping or a, or a fixing from the other side of that wall that's broke. And that is, you know, it's not, it's not your job to make sure you get payback on this. Sometimes you just have to respect somebody on credit. You know, because I love you, there's some respect I'm gonna give you on credit. You know, over in Romans, I wanna read the scripture. Um, Romans says this, Romans 12 and 19, and he amplifies says, beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for God's wrath and his judicial righteousness. For it is written in scriptures, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, saith the Lord. And so if vengeance is God, then we can't be seeking it for ourselves. We can't be like James Brown, I need some get back the big payback. And I've seen people in relationships that have had violations in them and they're in, they stay in that relationship, but their whole goal is to make that other individual pay for the mistake they've made. And it is causing worse problems than the initial violation of it. Absolutely. It's not your job to pay somebody back. And as much as we want revenge. The natural inclination for people is to want revenge, to get their lick back when something happens to them. Oh, you cheated on me. I'm cheating on you. Oh, you did that. I'm doing that to you. But the truth of the matter is, is that scripture clearly tells us that God said, vengeance is mine. He did not say revenge. He said, vengeance is mine. In other right. words, the anger or the frustration or the payback right. for what needs to happen belongs to God. And so you have to leave it to him to be the one to, to, to do what needs to be done in that person's life. And if you love that person, you don't really want that person to be paid back in a negative way anyway. What you want them to do is to learn their lesson. Right. You know, in the, the, the breaches in the, in the relationship that we've had, I didn't want you to suffer. I don't want you to get sick. I don't want any of those kind of things to happen to you. But I do want you to learn your lesson so that I don't have to deal with this anymore. And so what usually has to happen is, you know, as much as we want people to change, and we've said this before, until a person's mind changes about the things that they do, their behavior won't change. Mm -hmm. And so it's critical to, to, to help people understand, okay, this is, this is behavior that needs to, to change. And so you've got to do things a little different. You've got to think different about me. You've got to think different about the situation or we're going to continue to experience what we're experiencing. And so what we're going to do probably tomorrow is we're going to get into this conversation about secrets because I really feel like that's where we need to be talking. We're going to talk about keeping secrets from one another and in, in your relationships because they really, really can cause problems. And we're going to share our own personal testimony. We're going to share it because it's something that we lived through. We got over and uh, God has graced us and blessed us. Our marriage is strong. It's it's not perfect, but our marriage is strong today. How many years have we been married? 20, 20, uh, is it 26? So we're going to talk about secrets tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's 26 or 27, one of them. But, but anyway, we're going to talk about secrets tomorrow. We hope that we said something today. You know, I really wanted Skip to get out what was in his heart. These are things that yeah. he really wanted to share today. And so I hope that he said something let, today. Let, let me add this though. Um, you know, the one thing, one of the main things that people want 
in any relationship, whether it be business, any relationship, is honor and respect. Honor and respect. And there's a bunch of women on here. And let me say this, ladies. There's men too, though. Yeah, there's, but I, I want to say this to the ladies. Can, can, can I, and I probably shouldn't because I'll probably get my man card taken for this. But the reality of a man is this. As long as you honor and respect him, he will do whatever he can for you. Most good men are that way. That's just the way we're built. But when you begin to dishonor and disrespect, that's when they begin to separate, disconnect, uh, find something else to do versus being with you. It's so important to a man, and, and I'm not trying to be funny, but that's part of our ego. We want to go and we want to be around people who honor us and respect us. Even when you're, even when they're acting dishonorable, right. they still want to be, because I can see some people saying, well, what when they, what about when they, even when they're dishonorable, you know, there's something that, that, that disarms uh, a man when you still treat them in a loving way, even though you know that they've been dishonorable. Mm -hmm. The story of Smith Wigglesworth, Skip shared it uh, one time about Polly, Polly Wigglesworth. And Smith Wigglesworth, he was, you know, he wasn't at the time, wasn't a believer, but he had told her that she couldn't go to church anymore. He told her that, you know, he didn't want her going. And she told him, no, I'm, I'm going to go to church. And so one night there was a revival or something and she ended up going and he told her, if you go, I'm not going to let you back in the house. And so she left and she had a custom or practice of making him breakfast every day. Well, she went to church one night and what he did was he locked all the doors and would not let her back in the house. And what she ended up doing was sleeping on the back porch, huddled up in a, on a, on a step on the back porch. So when he got up the next morning, she wasn't in the house. So he got up to go get the paper and there she was huddled by the back door, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a ball. And when he opened the door, she jumped up, she kissed him on the cheek, said good morning and asked him what he wanted for breakfast. Well, that broke him down. That broke him down and eventually positioned uh, God to be able to move in his life. And I know some of y'all saying, I wish he would, you know, I know some of y'all saying that cause you know, Sisters, don't play that. But anyway, you know, God, you have to move yourself into a place that you allow God to get a hold of his life. And even when they're not dis, when they're dishonorable, when you are honorable, God honors you. And in God honoring you, then he will deal with him. And so we have to let God be God. But too many times we're jumping in the way and yeah. doing things our own self. But go ahead. But you know, what, what I love about that story is there was a trust and a respect for one another because she knew whatever he said he was going to do. And she accepted the consequences of, yeah, I'm going to go. And I know that I'm probably going to have to sleep on the, on the porch, but I'm still going to go. And so because she already knew what the consequences were going to be, because she already knew that he was a man of, of honor and he kept his word, she didn't get up with an attitude. She got up going, well, I know this is going to happen. And so I'm prepared for it. And I'm going to keep moving like, well, that's the consequences of the decision I made and keep it moving. Well, I'm sure that they knew one another. It, right. You know, but I don't, definitely I, don't, knew. I don't feel like he respected her by locking her out of the house. That's well, a disrespect. Well, 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 this well, is where I'm we saying, defer. No, no, no. What I'm saying is she knew him enough to know that his word was going to be kept. Yeah, that's if he, true. If, if he said, I'm locking the doors, then she didn't bam on the doors because she knew they were locked. Right. Because obviously he had kept her wor his word to her about other, other things. things yeah. And so, you know, this to me, that to me was, that was a sign of, okay, he keeps his word. So I'm not going to trip because if I want to go to this, this is what I'm going to have to do right. afterwards. Right, right. And so, you know, for me, when you know somebody enough to know that they keep their word, when some certain things happen, I know them. I know them and I know this is how they're going to react. Like Melva knows me enough to know that I am a very 
simple man. I really am. I don't I don't require, you know, any extravagance. Simple thing. Food, honor, sex. Actually, I told her the three F's when we got married. I said, I just need the three F's. Feed me what? The three F's. Feed me, freak me, and give me the fourth quarter. That's all I need. Oh, mercy That's all I need. I'm simple. Thank you for joining us on Fresh Date Man Alive. <laughs> My name is Melvin Henderson, and he may not be back tomorrow. <laughs> Love y'all. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>